Hello, everyone. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2013. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Joe Moore of the 49th Ward. Alderman, thank you for being here. Well, Steve, thanks for having me. And uh, we want to happy encourage... Happy 4th of July to you, by the way. Happy 4th of July, right? Yeah. You know, we're not going to have any fireworks in the studio tonight. We're well, gonna... it depends on who calls. That's true. Actually, good point. Right. So it is a live call-in show. Uh, over the next 25 minutes, call in. The number's on the lower part of the screen here, 312-738-1060. Uh, we'll be trying to get to as many calls as we can and also talking with the alderman about as many subjects as we can. Um, so let me go ahead and get started and just ask you a little bit ba of background info sure. about where the 49th Ward is. 49th Ward is in, uh, represents primarily the Chicago Rogers Park community on the far north side of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, are right along the lakefront. Uh, we're as far north as you can get without getting outside the city boundaries. Uh, Evanston's my northern boundary. Mm -hmm. The lake is my eastern boundary. I go as far uh, far west as Western Avenue. That's that right there. Mm -hmm. And as far south as Devon, which is right there. Perfect. Um, that map, uh, in, in that map, that's the peach-colored area is the 49th Ward. Now, all those, that other line, those other lines represent the old ward boundaries. There was a a shift, you know, a change in award boundaries that takes place every 10 years to account for changes in population to ensure that each ward is equal in population. And so um, I picked up a little bit more of the Rogers Park community and uh, lost uh, all of my Edgewater part of the ward and, uh, and a chunk of the uh, West Ridge portion as well. So, uh, you know, did you get a lot of emails from people sad to lose you as their alderman after uh, all these uh, years? People were crushed. You know, and seriously, uh, I think people appreciated the fact that we were in a, one of the few areas in the city where the ward boundaries corresponded with the community areas. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, myself and, and my colleagues, uh, Alderman O'Connor in the 40th Ward, Alderman Osterman in the 48th Ward, and Alderman Silverstein in the 50th Ward, all made a real point of trying to make sure that our wards corresponded as closely as possible to community areas. So the 49th Ward is uh, Rogers Park, uh, the 48th Ward is Edgewater, uh, the 50th Ward is Westridge, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just makes it for easy governing. So we, 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 we don't really, we looked more at, less at the political considerations and more of what was the best, what, what was best for our communities. Oh, that's great. And you've got uh, Loyola University, you've got Red Line stops, a Metro stops, so yep. you have a very active yep. neighborhood. The, uh, the last three stops on the, on the Red Line, uh, the Jarvis, uh, well, the last four stops, the Loyola, Morse, Jarvis, and Howard stop are all in my ward, mm -hmm. as well as the Rogers Park stop on the Metro Line. Oh, sounds good. So if there's ever an invasion from Evanston, you're on the front lines. We're in the front lines. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll guard Chicago uh, zealously. Sounds good. Uh, here's your contact information. Now, uh, when people go to your website, is there a way for them to sign up for alerts and updates? Good question. Yes, there is. Uh, uh, Ward49.com. You can sign up for my electronic newsletter. Uh, it's a, something I send out about two or three times a week with uh, uh, important news for about what's going on in the community. Uh, I've, it's been well received. People appreciate the communication they receive from me. I, I write them all myself. They're not ghost written by a staff person or a independent consultant. They're written by me. Mm -hmm. I feel that, that the information I give to people should be written in my own voice. Uh, not only do I let people know about upcoming events and community meetings, but I also go into great detail in explaining my decisions on zoning and land use issues. And quite quite frankly, I think one of the most transparent uh, ways of, of any ward in the city. No, I'd agree and so with I that encourage one. people to sign up for the newsletter. That's ward49.com. They just put in your email address and you'll be signed up. And, of course, the office is over on Greenview Avenue. Greenview and Jarvis, uh, j uh, just uh, steps from the Jarvis L. Uh, we've been there the entire time I've been alderman. As the thing indicates, mm -hmm. I forget the word for it. <laughs> uh, it's ward49 at cityofchicago.org is my email address. And, uh, and uh, the uh, people who still are old-fashioned want to call us on the phone, they're welcome to call us at 773 338 Five seven nine six, and let me ask you about: uh, Is there a night of the week when people can walk in and talk to you about yeah, anything on the uh, line? Every Wednesday night. Uh, tonight being an exception okay, because it's so the we night cut before into the holiday. Tonight, yeah. 
Uh, but uh, every Wednesday night between 5 and 7, I have what's called ward office hours where I will meet with anybody without an appointment on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, uh, I urge everyone who's considering to meet with me that night to call to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm not on political forum or something like that. Right. Um, uh, and that I'm there, but I generally uh, am there every Wednesday evening. And, of course, if Wednesdays aren't good uh, and you want to make an appointment with me, um, you call that, you send an email or call that phone number I mentioned earlier, and I'll be happy to, to meet with you on an appoint on a at a mutually convenient time by appointment. No, and, and we thank Rogers Park for sharing you with us on your ward night here. So it's great to great to have you here at the end of your ward night. Now, a lot of the people, let me jump into topics, and I'll remind everybody, call in if you want. The number's on the screen, so any questions. Um, a lot of people know you for your work with participatory budgeting. Uh-huh. Uh, now, can you tell us a little bit about exactly what that means for those who haven't heard sure. you talk about it before and how you've been implementing it. Uh, participatory budgeting, or what we call PB, is a method of deciding, uh, a very democratic method, democratic with a small d, <laughs> deciding how to spend public dollars. Uh, rather than government officials making that decision, the decision is literally made by the people in the political jurisdiction by popular vote. Um, so here in Chicago, each alderman gets $1.3 million a year to spend at their discretion on capital projects in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the aldermanic menu money. Uh, and uh, for years, uh, I, like any other alderman, just kind of exercised my discretion on how that money should be spent. I consulted with people. I made my own subjective uh, determination on how the money should be spent. Uh, but ultimately, it was my decision. About four years ago, I learned about a process called participatory budgeting. And and, st and now, instead of me making a decision, I take $1 million of that $1.3 million and turn it over to my people in my ward to decide by popular vote how the money is being spent. Mm. It's, it's a little more involved than that. It's a, it's a, it's a multi-step process, but essentially involves community residents uh, deciding on their own what projects should be considered for implementation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the projects are selected after community consultation to be placed on the ballot. And then anyone in my ward who is age 16 years of age or over is eligible to vote. And I mean anyone. Mm -hmm. That means you don't have to be a registered voter. You don't even have to be a citizen of the United States. All you have to do is establish that you're a resident of my community and you're age 16 or over and you can vote and decide how to spend some of your tax dollars. Interesting. And so we've had some really neat projects over the years, uh, in addition to the traditional streets and street lights and, and, and uh, traffic signals. We've had a dog park. We've had artistic murals. We've had uh, mm -hmm. a shower placed at the, along the beach to so people can wash the sand off of them. We've had handicap access ramps so that dis disabled people, mobility impaired people can access the lakefront easily. Uh, we've had a whole range of projects that were chosen not by me, but by the taxpayers in my ward. No, that's great. So it's literally like a certain day that people can come in and, and mm -hmm. in, in person vote on well, things? Well, like it's actually about a week. Uh, we do some early voting the week before the election, and then, and then we have an election. It's usually held in late April or early May uh, at a local high school in my community where people come out. And, and, and they will get a ballot, and it has all sorts of choices, mm -hmm. and they're given uh, a, number, a certain number of votes, and they allocate those votes among uh, the different choices. And the choices with the most votes up to the point where the million dollars is spent yeah. are then, uh, I agree, uh, to uh, ask the city to implement. That's great. I'm and, surprised you, you know, got people to vote for a shower on the beach in April or, or May. That's <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, uh, they also voted for uh, 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 heating lamps on the on the L platforms in sure. in April and May too. So sure. uh, people people plan ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and really what's exciting is it's now spread to to uh, other wards in the city. Uh, uh, this past year, the 46th Ward in Uptown, the 5th the Ward in, um, uh, in Hyde Park, and the uh, 45th Ward on the city's northwest side all did participatory budgeting as well, mm -hmm. as did, um, and next year, uh, the 22nd Ward in, in the city's little village area under Alderman Ricardo Munoz will mm -hmm. be doing participatory budgeting. And it's also spread to New York City. Eight city council districts have done participatory budgeting in New York. 
The city of Vallejo, California, yep. located just north of San Francisco, was the first city to do it citywide. And so something that's been in place in South America and Europe for 20 years mm -hmm. and came to the 49th Ward, first political jurisdiction in the United States to do it, is now spreading across the country. It's really an antidote to uh, people's cynicism and, and, and concern about lack of transparency. Well, no, this is great, totally yeah. transparent. It's totally democratic. And it's the people, not the politicians, deciding how the money should be spent. Well, and now you mentioned South America, and I know that you have kind of an international focus on a lot of the ideas that come into the office. Uh, you went down to Brazil uh, yeah. not too long ago. What do you feel? What do you think well, about what's going on down well, there? Well, I went to uh, Brazil um, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. to Por the city of Porto Alegre. That was the birthplace of participatory budgeting, and I was invited to come down there and speak on how we were doing participatory budgeting in Chicago's 49th Ward. They were, uh, you know, people were very excited that the U.S. Uh, was suddenly uh, embracing participatory budgeting, and they mm -hmm. wanted to find out what it's all about. And what I found out about participatory budgeting in Port Alegre is that it's incredibly popular. It is now so much uh, ingrained in the fabric of the city that there's no elected official who would dare try to take it away from the oh, people. that's great. And that's yeah. kind of what I'm trying to do here in Chicago. Oh, great. Well, let me go ahead and go to the phones now. We have our first call. Hello, caller, and what's your question? Hello, Alderman. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I have a quick question about the new parking meter rules. So, sure. um So can we park free on Sundays? And I live in Rogers Park, so does sure. that affect any part of Rogers Park? Yeah. In, in, uh, if you live in Rogers Park, you can park free on Sundays. And in fact, most areas of the city you can park for free, but I know there are some of my colleagues who are uh, considering um, keeping the uh, meters active on Sunday in order to protect their business districts and to help encourage a turnover of parking. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's like so many decisions in the city done on a ward-by-ward -ward basis, And uh, but I have for this period of time uh, decided to keep the parking free on Sundays. That's great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Hello, caller. What's your What's your question for the alderman? Uh, yes, good evening. Actually, I have two. Uh, my first question is, my kids go to school at Lakeshore, and driving on Pratt and Greenview mm -hmm. around the school is uh, tough. There's lots it's of kind potholes. of like driving on the moon, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> so I was wondering, like you're talking about infrastructure improvements. Uh, sure. Are there any going to? Uh, are there any plans yeah. for those two areas? In fact, uh, those streets questions? are online to be resurfaced, and here's why we haven't resurfaced them yet. Uh, as you may know, People's Gas is uh, laying new gas mains throughout the 49th Ward in Rogers Park. So uh, within a year or so, we're going to have entirely new gas mains. So that's a good thing. It's going to be a good investment. They'll be in place for a hundred years, but it's wrecking havoc in our ward right now. And one of the things it's done, it's prevented us from resurfacing streets, even those streets that are in dire need of resurfacing. Because obviously the last thing you want to do is have the city come in, resurface the street, only to have the gas company come in six months later and tear it up to lay the new mains. So we're waiting for them to get out of the neighborhood, and then we'll be able to resurface the streets. Uh, Pratt Boulevard, uh, unfortunately, from your point of view, is sort of like the Mississippi River of gas mains in my area. They're, they're the main tributary. And the way it works is the, the, the gas company replaces the, the uh, mains in, in, in the, the uh, smaller mains that emanate from that tributary uh, and leaving Pratt Boulevard for last. So Pratt is probably not going to be resurfaced, I'm afraid to tell you, until, until next year. But we're staying on top of the gas company. We meet with them on a biweekly basis to make sure they're doing the work and that they're taking care of the things they have to take care of. And we're going to try to get them out of my neighborhood as quickly as possible. Great. Thanks. And uh, is the caller still with Did us? Did he have another, yes, yes, yeah, you have another is, question? Yeah. A second question is uh, concerning uh, Alderman Mel. Is, uh, yes. Uh, what is your uh, feelings on him uh, you know, submitting his resignation? Well, you know, um, uh, Alderman Mel and I have not always uh, been on the same side of political issues, but I, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he has been he's been a long one of the longest serving aldermen. He has he's number two in seniority. He's been on the city council since 1975, uh, and um, uh, he is uh, you know really one of the funniest. Uh, I mean, and talk about sense of humor, uh, guys in the city council. So I, I will miss that aspect of it, and I certainly. Um, 
uh, appreciate and honor his tenure of service. Uh, he was a zealous advocate for his community, and I wish him well in his retirement. That's great. Well, let me go ahead and switch gears and remind everybody this is a live show. Uh, the number here is 312-738-1060. Now, our guest today is Alderman Joe Moore. If anybody wants to contact him off the show, we can go to their website at ward49.com, or, of course, the number to the office is 773-338-5796. Uh, now, one of the other issues you want to talk about when you came in here was there was a new vacant lot, uh, or there is a vacant lot issue coming up at Howard and Ashland. Well, it's uh, unfortunately, it's not a, a new vacant okay, lot. Okay, it's, it's been, been there for a while. It's been yeah. there a long time. It's been a real burr in my saddle and the community saddle, but... I'm pleased to report we're making progress on that. Um, last year, uh, I was able to convince the new administration to, uh, 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 the Emanuel administration, to have the city purchase this lot using some of the TIF funds in the Howard Plina uh, Tax Increment Financing District, which, by the way, has now expired. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the remaining money in that uh, TIF district has gone back to the taxing bodies in, uh, in addition to the schools. But we used some of that money to buy the lot so that we had, as a neighborhood, control over what was going to happen to it. And now that the economy is starting to turn around and we're starting to get some real interest from people, um, I, I believe that we're going to... to uh, be able to put together a very exciting project. Uh, right now we are uh, compiling a request for proposals mm -hmm. that will go out to the development community asking for uh, their suggestions and ideas on what uh, they would like to do with the um, with the lot. That's good. And then we will entertain a proposal, uh, engage in a full community review process, determine whether this, whatever the proposal is, uh, it would be good for the neighborhood, uh, but what we're looking for right now uh, is uh, is a project that would bring a mixed use of residential and commercial to uh, Howard Street, bring people with uh, some disposable income so they can support the businesses on Howard Street, and and support the revitalization that we're now seeing starting on Howard Street. We've got a great new coffee shop opening up that's doing gangbusters, good. Cafe Soul on Howard Street. We've just spent several million dollars. Uh, on a on a uh, streetscape project, bringing new street lights and new new sidewalks and curbs and gutters to the the street to really give it a good facelift. So Howard Street's about ready to really burst with energy and 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 redevelopment, and it's going to be really exciting. No, that's great to hear. Uh, we have another call for the show. Hello, caller. What's your question? I saw that a lot of the Divi bikes rolled out this week, mm -hmm. and, and I think they're really cool and pretty exciting. Yeah. but they kind of also show that I mean, we need a lot more bike lanes in the city. It's kind of the exactly. same pattern, but sort of where are we supposed to take them? So. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and uh, one of the things that the uh, participatory budgeting process uh, uh, that I referred to earlier produced in the 49th Ward are a lot of bike lanes, a lot of shared bike lanes uh, that have been uh, that have been pushed, uh, put into place. Uh, Howard Street, uh, Tui, Ashland, Rogers, um, and as soon as we get that street resurfaced, Pratt Boulevard, um, mm -hmm. uh, Albion Avenue, are all are, all have bike lanes. Uh, we um, uh, have put in a new uh, a large bike bike parking area by the um, lunch entrance to the Moore Cell, so people can ride their bike to the L. Mm -hmm. So we are a big, big believer in bike bicycling in, in the 49th Ward. Uh, the one thing I'm very disappointed at was the fact that the Divi program, the bike sharing program, only went to the edge of Rogers Park, only to Loyola. Hmm. So one of the things that we're going to be very strongly advocating for is for them to expand that bike sharing area up further north because there's so many people in Rogers Park who use bikes, yeah. who depend on bike for get to work and to school and uh, or just enjoy it for recreational purposes. And I just can't fathom why they didn't bring it up to Rogers Park. So we're yeah. going to get it up there one way or the other, either through our participatory budgeting process or through simply um, uh, using the bully pulpit to convince them <laughs> when they expand the program to put Rogers Park first on their list. Well, and you uh, also just had your big bike event. Yep. Every so, year I, I do a, a tour of the neighborhood, a bike tour of the neighborhood. Uh, we had a, a great time this past year. We had about 70 people uh, join us for the bike ride. It's become a real uh, an anticipated tradition 
in our in our community. I think this is the fifth year we've done it. That's great. All right, uh, one more caller here for the show. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, Alderman. I've been um, trying to find out: is there fireworks today and tomorrow, or is that only tomorrow? Well, um, uh, the there is no. The city used to have a large fireworks display downtown, and uh, f fiscal uh, constraints uh, caused the city to to stop doing that quite a number of years ago. Uh, but I do know uh, there are suburban communities. Now, I can speak from the far north side of the city. I know tonight they are doing a fireworks display in Wilmette, just north of, uh, you know, north of uh, the 49th Ward. And then tomorrow night, uh, the one that I always take my family to is the Evanson Fireworks. Uh, and it's a, uh, they do a very nice display. Uh, I usually uh, end up at the, uh, the landfill out by, up by Northwestern University. Mm -hmm. Gives you a great view. I don't want to tell too many people yeah, about giving this. Yeah, you're giving away your spot. Giving away my spot. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, there are the impromptu uh, fireworks displays that take place on uh, at Loyola Park that the police uh, do as best as we can to try to control. But uh, this being the 4th of July, people often uh, um, uh, do their own uh, amateur night fireworks displays. And uh, we just need to caution them to be very, very careful mm -hmm. uh, and, quite frankly, not to do that but to enjoy any one of the many professional displays that are taking place uh, throughout the, the uh, Chicago area. Now, uh, speaking about fireworks, I know that you have um, some news about a local firehouse. Yes, yes. Um, uh, a few years ago, those, of, those folks who live in my ward know that uh, we got a new, brand new fire station uh, located on Clark Street, just north of Tui Avenue, across from Tui Park. Uh, but in the in the wake, we were left with an old station, and the station is very historic. It's been around almost a hundred years, mm -hmm. and we want to preserve this historic building. And so, I've been working very closely with uh, the the mayor Emanuel's administration to make sure that the community has a lot of control over what is done with that fire station. The, um, uh, so a few uh, months ago, we sent out a request for proposals, asking people for proposals on what they wanted to do with the fire station. Uh, we received 16 proposals. They range from converting it to a residential use or like a single family home or to apartments to uh, various uh, proposals for community centers. Uh, we are okay. just started the process of vetting the proposals. Um, my 49th Ward Zoning and Land Use Advisory Committee will be working with me at vetting these proposals. We'll narrow them down to uh, uh, a, f uh, uh, a few of the viable proposals that then we'll present to the community in the fall for their input uh, and and uh, and then we'll make a decision as to uh, which uh, entity will get the fire station and um, and and you know we want to preserve it. We want to preserve its historic nature and we want to make sure whoever takes it over has the financial wherewithal to mm -hmm. do the job right and to make it a uh, uh, a lasting uh, uh, part of the 49th Ward. No, that's great. Thanks for your focus on that. Um, well, we're coming to the end of the show, so I figured I'd let you take one minute here to just kind of go over anything that we haven't covered. Anything well, you share? Uh, I think one thing that's an incredibly popular event that we do every year is our city sicker sale. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind everybody, whether they live in the 49th Ward or somewhere else in the city of Chicago, that beginning on July 16th, the city is going to be enforcing the city sticker rule and that each vehicle, uh, even if you have your vehicle registered in another part of the state or another part of the country, mm -hmm. if it's garaged here in Illinois, if it's, if it's uh, or here in Chicago, if you keep it in Chicago, you need to purchase a city vehicle sticker. Mm -hmm. And next Saturday at my office from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 7356 North Greenview, Greenview mm -hmm. at Jarvis, we will be having the city clerk's office here selling uh, city stickers. So you don't have to go downtown. You don't have to deal with uh, the hassle of waiting for it to get in the mail and wondering whether you're going to get it in time because time right. now is running short. So just come over and get your city vehicle sticker. And while and while you're there, uh, help yourself to some lemonade. We, we <laughs> you know, this being the summertime, and I think. Maybe by next Saturday we'll actually have summer weather. Yeah. Uh, we'll be uh, giving out free lemonade. So that's a Knock week from wood. Saturday on July 13th. A week, not this Saturday, a week from next Saturday, July 13th. 
Okay, and one more time, you can reach the office at 773-338-5796 or go online to ward49.com. Alderman, thank you so much for your time today. Well, we appreciate I it. I really enjoy it, and I wish everyone a happy and safe 4th of July. And uh, Can TV always appreciates having you in, too, as well, so we Anytime. always appreciate it. Uh, I'm Steve Nicotopoulos. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks to Sylvia on phones tonight. And be sure to tune in next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night for the next edition of Political Forum. Have a safe holiday.